。接下来呢，我们就先一起来看一下第四和第六题。那么首先来看一下第三十套题的第四题，也是呢，我们先审一下材料。而第四题呢，它解释的呀、啊，通常是一个专有名词。我们需要注意的呀、啊，首先是断首，还有断尾，还有呢，这段材料中间呀，就是跟这个名词相关的附近的这样一些句子，一定要注意起来。它通常啊是解释这个名词的关键。We often think of human intelligence as a mental ability to analyze and understand complex ideas. However, many psychologists believe that there is a different type of intelligence. Called emotional intelligence. People with emotional intelligence have the ability to recognize their true feelings and understand what is causing them. The ability to understand their own feelings enables them to better control their emotional responses, changing or correcting them when necessary. Emotional intelligence helps people to behave appropriately. In social situations, which allow them to maintain good relationships with others. 你这个地方呀，大家可以注意到我划线的这样一些句子，也就是说啊，跟这个词相关的几个句子里面啊，首先说明了它的定义，其次呢，它是怎么样改变这样一个人的一个行为的，比如说 better control their emotional responses, changing or correcting them when necessary. 那么通过这样一个 emotional intelligence， 对这个人会起什么样一个作用？这个都是咱们可以在定义中所包含的。我们先来审一下题。Explain how the example from the lecture illustrates the concept of emotional intelligence. 我们要解释的就是这个词 emotional intelligence。那么首先我们要注意这个 example。这 example 是怎么样说明这个 emotional intelligence 的？那么它前后的这样一个顺序，比如说之前发生了什么，后来的变化，一定要听好，一个环节都不能落下。如果说大家不是很确定我听到的是不是关键或者真实的信息，有没有听准，大家尽量呀、啊、说自己有信心，完全是材料中的这样一些内容，不可以随意的添加或者是改变这样一些内容。咱们所要作答的，必须完全源自于材料。Now listen to part of a lecture in the psychology class. So here's an example. My daughter had a friend over to our house recently, and they decided to watch a movie together. Only they got into an argument because they couldn't agree on what movie to watch. My daughter started to get quite upset during the argument, which wasn't like her at all. But then my daughter stopped. And thought about why she was so upset. She realized her reaction was inappropriate, and she also realized she wasn't really upset with her friend. There was something else bothering her. You see, she had just gotten this summer job as a camp counselor for children, and she was feeling a lot of worry and stress about how well she would do since she'd never worked with children before. So she figured out that she wasn't upset about what movie to watch with her friend, but about starting her new job. She really wanted it to go well. She wanted the kids to like her, and when she understood this, she stopped arguing with her friend and apologized to her. She told her friend how anxious she felt about starting the job and how sorry she was about getting upset with her. And her friend encouraged her, saying she'd do great at the job. So my daughter felt better, and they relaxed and had fun together, the same as always. 好的，听力过后呢，我们知道我们的第一步啊，首先是给出我们的 definition。那么 definition 啊，通常都是从咱们的 reading material 里面总结出来的。Emotional intelligence refers to the ability of people to recognize their true feelings and understand what is causing them. And the professor illustrates this with personal experience from his daughter. His daughter once invited her friend to come over to watch movie. But later they had an argument about what to watch. At first, his daughter was in, upset. 那么争吵了 However, later she cooled herself down and thought about why she acted this way. During which the emotional intelligence kicked in. 那么 emotional intelligence 就起效果了 She realized that she was actually upset about her new job as a counselor for small kids. 
rather than about her friend. 嗯，就就是整个过程呀，大家都要听出来。She was overwhelmed because she had never been with kids before, and she wanted them to like her. So she stopped the argument and apologized and explained her problem to her friend, who then forgave and encouraged her. Finally, they rela- relaxed and had fun together, just as usual. 那么这个地方啊，就是把整个过程，比如他啊是怎么意识到的，又是怎么和解的，都一步一步的说出来了。虽然这一部分呢，作答呢要完全根据听力材料来进行，千万千万在自己不确定的时候，不要往里添加任何的东西。那么接着呢，我们就来看一下下一套题的第四题。那么同样的呀，还是要审一下题，并且知道啊，要解释这个名词周围的这些句子是非常重要的。Although they may not realize it, people do not always manage their money in responsible way. In their minds, people tend to divide their money into different categories, as if they were putting it into separate mental bank accounts. This tendency is known as mental accounting. Mental accounting, 首先啊，知道是一个 tendency， 锁定它周围的这样一些啊名词，会对你的定义非常有帮助。People mentally store some money in one account to be saved, while they imagine other money being stored in another account from which money can be taken and freely spent. Mental accounting can lead people to spend more money than they should, which can make it difficult for them to save enough money to achieve their long-term financial goals. 嗯，通过这个 mental accounting 的解释，我们可以看到啊，它是有不好的地方的，会让大家呀花的钱啊比原应该花的要多。所以咱们的 example 里面啊，很有可能提到这一部分的内容。Using the example from the professor's lecture, explain the concept of mental accounting. 那么这个地方我们需要解释的就是这个 mental accounting， 而且会用到 professor 的一个例子。我们首先第一步啊，就是 definition， 一定要给出这个 mental accounting。What is mental accounting？ 那么 definition 啊，通常都是从 reading material 里面来的，就是你的阅读材料。那么阅读材料中的这个定义非常重要，这个词啊，周围的句子一定要看清楚，抓好。那么第二步呢，就是 example。那么通常啊， professor 会举一个自己的例子或者别人的例子来说明。那么前后这个顺序，它的一些递进的一些词汇，比如说 first、second， 描述事情啊，它有一些句子之间有一些间隔的，那可能是一步一步分隔开来的，所以大家一定要听明白，然后把每一步都记好。那么知道题目的要求的话，我们就先一起来听一下听力。Now listen to part of a lecture in a psychology class. So a good example of this is something that happened to me when I was younger. I had an office job, and I worked there every day during the week, and I made a regular salary from that. But also, I worked as a waiter at a restaurant each weekend, so I made some money from doing that. Now, around this time, I decided I wanted to buy a house. So every time I got my regular paycheck from my job at the office, I'd save as much of the money from it as I could after I bought the basic stuff I needed. But with the money I made as a waiter, that was another story. Somehow, I guess that money seemed separate from the money I earned at my regular job. So I used the money I made at the restaurant to go out to dinner, to buy videos or CDs, things I didn't really need. But the thing is, it ended up taking me a really long time to save up all of the money I needed to buy the house. And looking back now, I realize I could have bought the house a lot sooner if only I'd saved more of the money I made working at the restaurant. 那么听力听完了呢，首先我们第一步就是要给出啊 mental accounting 的这样一个定义。Mental accounting is a tendency， 看见没有，又出现了。其实原词照搬的 ，that people divide their money into different categories in their mind and therefore spend more money than they should have. The professor takes his personal experience as an example. He used to have two jobs. He had an office job on the weekdays. And got regular paycheck from it. Also, he worked part time in a restaurant at weekends, which earned him some extra money. He decided to buy a house, so with the regular salary he earned from his office job, he only bought daily necessities 
and then put aside as much as possible. But with the money earned from the restaurant, he wasn't so careful. Spending it on dinner and buying unnecessary stuffs like CDs. Because through mental accounting, the part time was separate from his regular paycheck. As a result, it took him longer time to get enough money for a house than he should have if he didn't spend the restaurant money. 那么这个地方的这个结结局啊，正好印证了定义当中出现的这样一个情况。所以大家啊，在看那个 reading material 里面啊，后半部分的内容呀，不能忽略不看，一定要看它会产生什么样的转折，或者它会导致什么样的一个后果。那么这样的话，帮助咱们理解听力材料即将听到这样一个内容。接着呢，我们来看一下第六题。那么第六题呢，通常啊是一个学术性挺高的这样一个解释一个名词这样一种题。那么大家会觉得第六题非常有难度啊，首先是理解起来有问题。通常很多情况下会遇到一些不会的词，在听到不会词的时候啊，大家不一定非得一定把它完全无误的写出来，然后再说出来。大家甚至可以在笔记上记拼音或者是中文词，只要你能把这个单词说出来，不一定这个单词啊理解是最重要的，而是说啊你听到的材料和它的例子是最重要的。你不一定要知道这个动物是什么或者这个植物是什么，但你一定要知道 what is example. You have to explain it. 那么这个题呢，就要求咱们用这个 example of the lizard from the lecture, explain two benefits of subsurface locomotion. 那么一看呢，又不明白了。可能有的人啊，连 lizard 都不认识。那么这个没有关系。那么蜥蜴这个词不认识啊，不妨碍咱们回答问题。咱们只要听就可以了。我们还是啊，先听一下听力。Listen to part of a lecture from a biology class. When we humans walk from place to place, we move on the Earth's surface, across the Earth's surface. Many animals, of course, do the same thing. Horses and dogs and cows and so on all move on the surface, across the surface of the Earth. But there are also quite a few animals that have the ability to move from place to place underground, beneath the Earth's surface. This moving around underground is known as subsurface locomotion. Subsurface locomotion has a number of benefits. One benefit of subsurface locomotion is that it enables animals to minimize their exposure to extreme temperatures. This is very helpful for animals that live in areas with harsh climates, where it could be very dangerous to spend large amounts of time on the surface. For example, in the Sahara Desert in Africa, there's a type of lizard that's able to move beneath the surface through the sand very quickly. Because this lizard can move so easily and so quickly underground, it doesn't have to travel on the surface where it would be exposed to dangerously high temperatures. Another benefit of subsurface locomotion is that it can help animals capture prey. That's because animals on the surface can't see predators that are approaching underground. Our lizard in the Sahara Desert is again a good example. The way it works is, when an insect is walking nearby on the surface, it produces very subtle vibrations in the sand. When the lizard senses these vibrations, it moves very quickly underground, where it can't be seen, toward the source of the vibrations. It then suddenly pops up right under the insect and catches it completely by surprise. 好的，听力听完呢，我们还是啊参考一下这份答案。那么同样呢，这个考察 ，What is the benefit of subsurface locomotion? One benefit of subsurface locomotion is to allow animals minimize their exposure to extreme temperature, especially those that could be very dangerous. A good example of this is a kind of lizard that lives in Sahara Desert in Africa. The lizard can move quickly on the ground to keep from the dangerously high temperature. 那么气温很高啊，它就可以在地下活动了。Another is that it can help the animals catch their prey more easily, because the prey above the ground usually fail to see them when they move beneath. Back to our lizard, it preys on small insects that move about the ground. 
and the movement produces subtle vibration that can be detected by the lizard. So the lizard moves quickly through the sand toward the source of the vibration and then pops up from the soil to capture and eat the prey. 那么这个地方就提到两点。那么首先第一个呢，就躲避开啊，或者避免开这样一些 dangerous environment。第二点就 catch their prey more easily。那么都结合了这个 lizard leads。那么这个题就完全依靠咱们听力的能力了。大家也可以也是可以采用那个八字记笔记的方法。首先 ，two benefits， 咱们可以写在上面。然后 ，the first benefit，the second benefit。那么后面延伸啊，例子继续延伸下去。我们接着来看下一套题的第六题。Using the example of the owl and the wolf, explain how two special body features have helped Arctic animals adapt to the cold. 这个地方啊，咱们又可能会觉得，哎呀，又是不是我擅长的领域啊？又是动物啊，植物啊，大家不要担心啊，只要咱们这个题出来啊，大致能明白它考察什么意思。听听力的时候啊，不会太难，大家只需要记下来，然后沉稳下来，用一个比较好的笔记的办法。这个我们在后文啊，后面的课中啊，会集中介绍这个记笔记的这样一个方法，在那个技巧那节课里面。嗯，大家看到这个题以后啊，审会提到两个动物，一个是 owl and the wolf， 而且在什么环境下 ？Arctic 这样一个极端环境下是如何适应 cold 这样一些关键词？大家抓出来，理解了大致的题目的要求意思以后啊，我们就一起来听一下听力。Listen to part of a lecture in a biology class. Even though it's cold and snow-covered, the Arctic houses many species of animals that manage to survive the harsh conditions there. These Arctic animals have adapted to the extremely cold temperatures, primarily because of certain body features that help them to survive in the cold Arctic climate. Let's look at a few of them. For one thing, many Arctic animals have developed a protective covering on their feet. The covering usually consists of fur or feathers, which act as a protective layer between the cold and the animal's skin. Since they spend so much of their time on snowy, icy surfaces, whether they're standing on the ground or swimming in the water, they can easily lose heat through their feet. This is especially true of Arctic birds. A bird like the Arctic snowy owl, for example, has feathers on its body the way other birds do. But unlike most birds, it also has feathers all over its feet. This shields and protects the feet from the icy ground, so that very little of the owl's foot actually touches snowy or icy surfaces, which helps its feet to stay warm. Another physical characteristic that some Arctic animals share is having smaller bodies and smaller, shorter body parts. In other words, their bodies are often more compact than other animals. And the parts of their bodies that stick out or protrude, like the legs, ears, or tails, are smaller and shorter. And the result is that there is less body surface exposed to the cold air. A great example is the Arctic wolf. Unlike the larger gray wolves that live in warmer climates, Arctic wolves have relatively small, compact bodies that efficiently retain heat. They also have smaller ears and shorter legs, so they lose less body heat than animals with larger bodies or longer body parts. And in a climate where the temperature is below zero most of the year, that's very important. 好的，听力听完了，我们先来啊参考一下这一份答案。The Arctic animals usually develop some body features to help survive in the harshly cold Arctic region. 我们这个地方先来一个总括，哎，他们啊发展出了一些特点。我们这特点是什么 ？The first development mentioned is a protective covering on their feet, which is a layer covered with feathers or furs. Animals usually have to stand in the freezing ground for a long time, which makes it easy for them to lose heat through their feet. So they need a protective layer to protect them from the cold. For example, a bird called Arctic snowy owl has feathers all over its feet, so very little part of its foot actually touches snow surfaces, and it stays warm this way. Another body feature 
is having a more compact body so that there is less body surface exposed to the cold air. For example, the Arctic wolves have small bodies and body parts that can efficiently reserve heat. Their ears are smaller and legs shorter so that they lose less heat than animals with larger bodies. 那么就是两个例子啊，跟随了两种动物。那么大家可以在记笔记的时候啊，就是 the first one, the second one, the owl and the wolf。那么可以分开两个分支来记。那么以上呢就是咱们今天的全部内容了。非常感谢大家。